G'day and welcome back. Today we're going to specifically look at the north magnet, which is represented here in the schematic, or in our picture. And here we are using a, a rare earth magnet, a neodymium, and we need to have the north pointing this way to conduct or to transfer the north facing flux. You could build it the other way around with the south facing here, however you would have to uh, have your coil wound the opposite way and I'll get to that when I get to the, get to the coil. But today we're looking at the, uh, the magnet. So the first thing you need to do is establish which is north and which is south and that's easy enough to do with a compass. So obviously the red on here points to north and the white to south. So all I have to do is move that within range and you can see that the north is attracted to this end of the magnet. So that means that this end of the magnet is south. If I turn it around, watch what happens. And you can see that the south is attracted to the north. Hence, I've marked it north and south. So that's one easy way of telling what is north and what is south. Now for the sake of the experiment, uh, I'm just doing a small scale operation, so I only need a small, uh, these small magnets, which is N52s apparently, or thereabouts. Um, can you use a electromagnet? Well you can, and in fact you can use any uh, magnet uh, using electromagnet. Uh, the way that we will do that uh, is the following. And quite simply, we cut off the ends uh, and we apply a current to the, a DC current to the coils and what that will produce is an electromagnetic effect. What we have to ensure is that when we come to make our, uh, our coil here, which will be a DC pulsed coil, that it's big enough to uh, big enough to cancel the flux of this last large magnet here. So we're going to make a big unit. Now the force of this magnet, the, this electromagnet by the time we're done, will be able to lift about 300 kilos. And that's quite a lot for a small, uh, a small magnet like this. The magnet will be no good uh, if we can't cut off the flux. Basically, it'll just make the rest of it a magnet and not generate any electricity. So we have to be able to shut off that flux and that's what this coil does, the impedance coil here. It'll impede the, the flux. So every time that fires, that coil fires with the DC pulse uh, and cuts off the flux and then uh, what will happen is the flux will be once the coil shuts off, the flux will again go through the rest uh, at a rate of about 300 kilos. And now that's just an example, um, the best way to describe it. But you can imagine these pickup coils, what a blast they're going to get from that. And that's surprisingly not a high voltage or current. I think it's about um, 12 volts at about 5 amps. Um, so that's, that's capable of doing a lot more than that. Uh, but that's all we'll be doing with that to create what we have to create. So in a nutshell, uh, that's why we use a permanent magnet and or an electromagnet that's loaded with DC, DC only, a DC electromagnet. Uh, that's why we're using this system. And so the next, in the next video, I'll talk about this very important, this very important coil and uh, how to wind it in the correct direction uh, and how big to make it, etc, etc. But today, for now, that's it. That's it for the, for the magnet. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.